Today we're taking a quick and first look at the new Wyvern Link VTX by Emacs. Now they consider this as a Wave 2 product, meaning that this is more like a second generation product compared to the original VTX. Now make no mistake about it, Emacs is very honest about this. They still consider this as an alpha product and it says it right here on the box. And what that means is that this device here isn't really ready for mass public consumption. But if you're an FPV enthusiast, especially about the Open IPC project, then this might be the right project for you. So let's open this up and see how it looks. Now shout out to Emacs for this redesigned box here. It looks pretty good. In fact, it looks like it's ready for like a retail store with these little hooks right here. You can just hang this up on your shelf and it looks a lot better than the original boxing. Let's just open this up and see how it looks. Here we go, slide this off. And here you have this nice plastic case. And the first thing here, you can see like a little fan. So they actually designed this whole thing to have a nice presentation. And there you go, this thing looks amazing, guys. And this thing looks amazing. Really nice, a big departure from the original VTX. Then we have the camera right here. It's not connected to the actual VTX. Pretty cool, we'll take a look at it a little bit later as well. And then we have the antenna. So this has a lot of accessories for this VTX. Looks like two antennas, kind of hard to get it out of here. Looks like a SMA connectors. Besides that we do have an adapter here. Looks like an MMCX connector to the SMA. So. Obviously the connection on the VTX is MMCX, and we'll have to convert that. We said that we have the connectors here to go from the VTX to your flight controller, as well as another one here. Looks like a cable here for the update, to update the actual VTX. And this looks like a, the typical network board here. And that converts it from an ethernet cable here to that special cable that we have here on the side here, and that can update the actual VTX. Last but not least, we have some a bag here with some screws, some hardware. It looks like mounting screws to mount the VTX to your drone, as well as the nuts and washers to put this adapter to your drone. And that's it. Everything is made up pretty nice here. You could tell they actually put some more effort into this whole thing. Besides the actual product, these are special cutouts here on this box here, presentation here, to fit these things very securely, especially during shipping. So they've obviously stepped it up and you can definitely see that this is a second gen product overall. All right, so let's take a closer look at this Wyvern Link Wave 2 VTX. This thing looks amazing. It is so much more refined compared to the first version. First version had maybe two separate boards. There wasn't any casing, no protection on there. This looks a lot more redefined and uh, more professional overall. And this isn't that heavy overall. So let's weigh this and see how much it weighs. With the cable, looks like 40.9 grams. Looks like 40.94 grams. So you can say around 41 grams. And then with the actual camera, let's remove the actual lens protector on here. We're looking around 49.2 grams overall. So 50 grams for this whole setup right here, not too bad. Now that's not the lightest thing, but this was designed to fit into larger drones. Think about three and a half to around seven inch drones. And this one here has a lot more performance compared to the Gen Run product, guys. So Emacs have done some improvement with the chipset of this VTX. Now, if you still think that this VTX is a little bit too big and heavy for your smaller drones, think anything under three and a half inch, then Emacs still has you covered. They have their 100 milliwatt VTX. I have it installed here in this small three and a half inch drone. This is a Baby Hawk 2. And this thing is super light, guys. It's so thin, it's a single board. And you can probably put this thing into maybe even a 65 millimeter drone. It's that light and small, guys. I've done a full review on this VTX and it does work very, very well. I'll leave it linked above and below so you can take a look at it. All right, so let's take a closer look at this Wyvern Link VTX, this Wave 2. And it's a big improvement, a big jump in quality compared to the first one here. The th first thing that jumps out at me is obviously this alloy case. It looks like aluminum, machine aluminum. It looks very, very nice with this black color and they left this part here exposed. Obviously here you have the fan in here which wasn't on the original version here. And you have some branding, say Emacs on here, as well as the Wyvern Link. 
and it shows you right here 800 milliwatts this is the big boy right here now having said that with that new chipset and increased power there is also a lot more heat and emacs decided to put a fan as well as this alloy case acting like a heat sink to actually dissipate the heat on this vtx now on the back here you have these two holes here for the antenna obviously now you have diversity we talked about it before you have these two adapters here from mmcx to sma now that's pretty cool because uh, a lot of FPB guys have SMA connectors or SMA antennas. Depending on how these things here perform, you could easily upgrade these to maybe say a more premium, maybe a taller or longer antenna. But we'll see how these here perform and uh, decide about that a little bit later. Now on the left side here, you have a slot here for some air vents as well as two connectors here. You have a connector here. We talked about this connection right here to actually update the firmware on this VTX as well as a micro SD card slot here. And that's also used to update the firmware on here as well. I don't think at the time of filming this has the capabilities for DVR recording, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, how you can get around that in uh, another way. Now besides that on the back here, you have two connections here. You have the MIPI cable here, and this connects to your nice little camera here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And below here, you actually have the connector here to connect to your flight controller or to your drone. Now this is a, uh, a four pin connector. I really wish though that they made it simple where you have the DJI style connector because a lot of modern flight controllers have that plug just for that VTX. Now, a lot of guys are going to that. In this case, you do have to hardwire this to the flight controller. I do think that I will actually convert this and put a DJI end on here so I can just plug it straight into my flight controller making this thing very easy plug and play for my drones. Now last but not least underneath you have mounting holes here to actually easily mount this to your drones. We have 20 by 20 and 25 by 25 mounting holes on here for different uh, mounting solutions on here. Alright so overall this thing looks really really nice. I'm impressed by the build quality and it's a huge improvement over the first version of that VTX. It's so much more refined. Now I'm eager to see how this thing here performs and in the next video I'll be installing some one of my drones and taking for a flight. So if you want to see how to do that, hit that subscribe button therefore you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. Let's move over here to the camera on here and nothing really crazy or special about it. It's a 19 millimeter camera. The first version did a pretty good job. Now on the back here you do have the connection here for the MIPI cable. There is really no backing plate to actually protect it once it's uh, on there. The cool thing about it, this one says Emacs on here, and this one has the IMX415 sensor here. It's a Sony sensor. And this one here says version 2.1. So it'll probably be a better camera overall compared to the first version here. But this looks nice overall. Your standard screw holes on here. Nothing really crazy, guys. Now this is obviously a 4K sensor. And I think you can get somewhere around 120 frames per second, even in 1080p. So a lot of frame rates and resolutions on this camera here. All right guys, so what do you think about this Wyvern Link V2 or Wave 2? Are you excited about this? Or are you gonna try and get on the bandwagon here? Now, we know that this is a digital system and this gives us another option in the open IPC world. And we know currently there's kind of a reduction of other options on the market. You no longer can get a DJI VTX. So this might be a really good option for you. The timing has been pretty spot on by Emacs to actually release this product. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. As I said before guys, I'll be making an install video installing this in my drone taking for a flight. And I just recently got the new Wyvern Link VRX. I'll be doing an unboxing on this right after this video. So I'll leave it linked above and below so you can take a look at it. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.